Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat, and another Photoshop tutorial. And we're going to make magazine covers, all right? So I'm gonna make a magazine cover. The main purpose of this lesson is to learn about Photoshop text and how you can format the text and make it closer together in different sizes and things like that. Uh, and then we're using kind of the uh, thing where it's gonna be a magazine cover, but of course you can take these skills on to make promotional posters and other things as well. Anything that needs text on it. We're just gonna use some standard fonts which are available in Windows 10, but you can of course go to Defont and get more fonts uh, if you want to. So a lot of high-end and fashion magazines, I use this minimalist layout. So we're not gonna make a full color magazine, although you could if you wanted to. We're gonna go for these ones that don't have many colors in them and they either use black and white or they use desaturated pictures and they might only have three different colors that they use in the magazine cover, all right? So learning these skills, which we're gonna show you, like we said, you can make promotional posters for social media. All right, now remember, I'm a bit of a slow talker, so make sure you uh, go to the player bar in YouTube and then go to that tools cog on the end, click on it and go to playback speed and make it 1.5, 1.75, maybe even two speed uh, because it's going to flow a lot better. All right, now this is a long lesson with quite a few steps in it. So you might need to use the index timeline that's in the uh, video description. That way you can do a certain section of the lesson, you can stop and then you can come back another time, look at the timeline where you're up to and just click on the numbers there and YouTube will automatically take you to that point in the video. All right, so these are some which our students made. So uh, using these skills, uh, the idea is to just have minimal colors. So here we've just got gold, blue, and a black and white, all right? And Vogue was a very popular one. This one I really like because it was really different to all the others, a kind of flower garden magazine. Uh, of course, music magazine, motorcycle magazine. This was kind of cool, an empire magazine, all black and white with Spider-Man in it. Uh, music magazine again, a footy magazine, Aussie rules football. Uh, this one was just a very interesting, different one. And what else we got? Vogue, very popular. Vogue again, very popular. And Vogue one more time there. Uh, and we've got Billboard, we've got a retro magazine, this one, and another Vogue magazine. Vogue was very popular. Vibe magazine is the one we're gonna do, kind of music rap kind of magazine. Uh, and we've got a couple of examples there with a president aspire weekly in the middle. So uh, these are ones our students made. So all sorts of creative things you can do. You don't have to do the one we're doing. Now other applications, um, you can make really great promotional posters like this is for a music band, some friends of ours. And you can see you learn how to do the font and put the outlines around it and all that sort of thing. And you can put together a really good uh, promotional poster using layers to put different things in the background, put the people and then put the text writing on top. All right, so lesson downloads. Uh, there's three start Photoshop templates you can use. We've got a black one, a gray one, and a white one, which will be the right kind of portrait size for a magazine cover. And you can get your own image to use for the cover, the main feature image. But there is this one of an anime girl and a blonde model here. You can use either of those ones if you want to as the main person for your magazine. And then you've got the templates for the background and the step-by-step -step instructions. So if you go to the video description, uh, you'll be able to get these downloads and try out the lesson and use the step-by-step -step instructions as well as the video if you get stuck. All right, now the main steps are as follows. So you get a black and white or selective color, some desaturated color photo, use the ones we've got or get your own. And use one of the download templates, black, gray, or white, although in this lesson we'll show you how to make a gradient template background. Uh, get a magazine heading from Google Images, make it have a transparent background, change its color. So you need to have done like our previous lesson would really help if you've done that one about um, cutting people out and making clear backgrounds for them. Uh, then we're gonna make these text headline captions. This is the main thing to learn in this lesson and use the window character menu uh, to modify the text and like crowd it up closer together, make it taller, and do different things to, to it horizontally and vertically. Just get a barcode off Google Images and we'll put that onto the magazine. And we're gonna use different layers 
and make some adjustments as well along the way. All right, so it's good if you've been doing our uh, playlist in order, our Photoshop course in order, uh, because then you'll have the previous skills, but you could try and do this without having done those and it could work out okay for you. All right, now at various points in the lesson, our students were encountering uh, this thing that uh, Photoshop had made a smart object on the layer, and then if they wanted to use file place embedded to put something on top of that layer, they'd get this error, could not complete your request because the smart objects not directly editable all right so if that happens all you need to do is just click that OK button and then on that particular layer just right click it and go down to rasterize layer and click on that which will turn the smart object vector mathematical kind of image it'll turn it back into a dotty pixel image which can be edited all right so if you get that problem that you've got a smart object that's not editable okay just go click the okay go to your layer right click rasterize layer all right that came up a few times for our students while they're doing it now the feature image for the cover uh this is one here which we got off 123rf.com uh so we can't give that one to you all right because of our copyright laws but you can get your own image and what we did with that was it was kind of a color image and we made it black and white and then just did selective color on the lips around the eyes and on the hair uh, to kind of get this minimalist look uh, into it all right so that's what you might want to do if you not doing a full color magazine you're trying to do this minimalist fashion high-end style that's the sort of thing you have to do turn your color into a selective color and go and see our previous lesson on selective color uh, to do that all right now we need to then remove the image background so the background uh, when you open up the image could have a padlock on it so if that's happening you need to click that padlock uh, and then what we do is uh, do the quick selection and then the erase tools to clear the background to make it see through all right so we're just going to quick select her with the quick selection tool or you can quick select the background it doesn't really matter and then let's see quick selection then eraser tools you select subject actually there's a button up the top select subjects which we showed you in our previous lessons and do select inverse to get the background selected and then press the delete key remember you can go into uh, the settings uh, for the smoothing feathering and uh, contrast but we just use smoothing and feathering and we find it's best to click on that down arrow and be on this red background to see things better anyway that was in previous lessons you should know how to do that and then we get the template so in photoshop uh, you need to do file and then click new and what we're going to do here is we're going to uh do a gradient one for you but first off you just start off with file new now a good size for a magazine cover is 500 across and 800 down that'll give you the nice landscape proportions and we just used a black background here and go create all right and then we're going to do a radial gradient fill but you can either just get one of our templates that's already made, made up for 500 by 800 in white gray or black and use that or if you want to try out this gradient fill well then you need to make your own one like this file new 800 500 800 72 pixels inch will be enough uh, resolution and we'll do a bit of a live demo and show you some of these things later on so click onto the rectangle tool and click gradient fill so on the fill here you click on that and you go to gradient and then for the type here we're going to click radial so we're going to draw a rectangle over the whole back background we've got for our cover and we're going to actually make it a gradient fill here that's a radial fill so you need to set all that up and if you double click on this little kind of house symbol this uh, square symbol under here we're going to uh, change that so that it's kind of a dark gray from about this area on the color palette all right and we're going for radial so you'll see the effect in a minute you can see it's kind of got like a little gray spotlighty area brighter area here and the rest is all dark so it's pretty subtle not a really big effect but it'll just make uh, 
the magazine cover look a little bit better if you've got the right sort of uh, image that you're putting on top of it. All right, now to get that image which we made clear and saved as a PSD file, you just go file and place embedded like we've done in previous lessons. Find that image, like that was our one where we'd taken this one and made it have a clear background saved as a PSD, and then click on place, all right? And what'll happen is that'll bring your image in and you can use these resizes, pull on these blocks on the corners to make it bigger and then press enter. Now, if you uh, want to go back later on and get back to this resizing, that's okay. You just go to the edit tab up the top and choose free transform. All right, so and our magazine is background and the person, now the feature person's all ready. And we're gonna do a vibe style magazine. So if we look on Google images, this is the style. And you can see here, this is one that's got a black and white folder uh, photo with just some gold writing on it and we have a barcode usually. So we're gonna try and make one of these sorts of, uh, this style of cover, all right? But you can do your own, you can do Vogue, you can do motorcycle magazine, car magazine, whatever you wanna do. Um, now sometimes, see here, we've got a little bit of a uh, kind of white around the edge or gray around the edge when we place that onto the dark background. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, get onto that picture layer, this layer here, and then get on your quick selection tool and do select subject so you've got all of that selected and we're going to pull the selection inwards instead of feathering it outwards now how you do that is you go to select and you go to modify and you go to contract we want to contract this and pull it in away from that gray edge all right so we do that and if you choose a value of like 10 or 12 that should get rid of that kind of gray um, ghosty outline around her and then click ok and we're going to feather the edge by 1.5 pixels. All right, so while you're on that select and mask button, while you're still on that quick selection tool, you can go to the select and mask button and set the smoothing to 20 and the feathering to 1.5 and then click OK. And then go select inverse. So we've actually got uh, the opposite of her selected, which will be that gray ghosting around the outside and then you can press your delete key and then do control D to finish and see how we've got rid of that ghosting. So we kind of shrunk it in and then we did select inverse. So that meant that we just had this gray bit selected and then we pressed delete to get rid of the gray bit. All right, so that's how you get rid of um, ghost edges. Uh, there is an alternative way you can make an inner shadow over the top of this uh, and turn that into shadow area, which will be dark and match the cover. So on a dark cover, this other method will work. So what you do is you right click and go blending options and tick, click on the inner shadow, which will tick it. And then if you use these settings here uh, and then click your OK, uh, what's going to happen here is uh, the inner shadow See, we've sort of got this black shadow around there. So that's the inner shadow method. That's the contract method. Look, they almost look identical. It's very hard to see the difference. I kind of like the contract uh, method because it's kind of keeping it really sharp on the cover there. Um, so we're going to use this uh, contracting method for our magazine cover, but either one would be okay as long as we don't have that gray ghosting around the edges. All right, so we're ready to make the title. Now how we do that is you just go to Google Images and search like for the Vibe magazine logo, put that into your search, and here it is. And then we're going to get out the Windows snipping tool. So just click the Windows icon, get on snipping tool. It looks like this. This is the older version. The newer version might look slightly different, but all you have to do is uh, you go new and you trace around the item you want to get this item here and then you can go uh, copy like that. Now we leave the cover background open in Photoshop. So leave that stuff we're working on open. And if you do file new, Photoshop will know something is being copied to memory. And I'll actually work out the exact size of that item that's being copied to memory, which is kind of a pretty cool thing. And so when you go file new, it'll automatically set the size. That's the size of the thing we've snipped out and we've copied to put into memory. So don't change those values at all. Uh, and the back, black background's fine. Just click create button. All right, and what'll happen is you get a blank document and there's our black background and it's the correct size for that vibe thing. Now, if you just go edit and paste up the top, go edit on Photoshop and then select paste or control V, I think will do it. You can do edit and paste 
or press Control and V and then it'll paste it into Photoshop, all right? Uh, now we just need to get our magic wand tool kind of works best. And with the magic wand, you can select all those individual letters. Uh, just click, 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 click four times with the magic wand. So the magic wand's under the quick selection tool. So you push and hold down this little arrow button here in the corner. Then instead of having quick selection, just get on magic wand. And then we go select an inverse so that we've got all that background selected because that's what we want to remove. And uh, we've got to get rid of that black background layer. So click on that and unpadlock it and just press the delete key to get rid of that. And now if you press, if you're on this vibe layer and press the delete key, that should take out the background. You'll see the checkered flag, which tells you uh, that it is transparent. And then just press control D to uh, get rid of those lines around the outside, the little marching ants as they've called. And we'll have that on a clear background. Now, uh, what happened to ours was that uh, it kind of wasn't in color anymore. It went into some uh, strange mode. So if that happens, you just need to go image mode and check you're in RGB color. Because we had a black and white picture that we took in as our new um, project, Photoshop somehow figured, oh, they want to do a grayscale black and white and automatically change it to this behind the scenes, uh, which is not what we want to do. So you may have to go image mode RGB color. So after you've deleted the background, just go in here and check image mode and make sure it's on RGB color. All right, now we want to change the uh, color of that black writing into a gold color, all right? So on this foreground color selector here, you click on that and we want to kind of get into these orangey yellows here and pick ourselves kind of a dull gold sort of color like that. And then we click OK. And if you want to know what that exact color is and get the exact same one as we've got here in the tutorial, you can just uh, skip clicking and just type 175, 161 and 50 for the red, green, blue mixture. And that'll give you that exact color, which is right there. So you can communicate colors to people by giving them the RGB values, give them those three values and they can make the exact color that you've made. So that's a handy little thing to know um, for all sorts of uh, graphic design applications using. So now hold down shift, hold down the shift key and go click, click, click to get those black letters all selected. Uh, but we don't do in select inverse. So we've just got the black letters selected and then we can go down to where this gradient tool is, push down on it and there should be a paint bucket tool. So you get onto the paint bucket tool and then you can see it's set up with this gold color and all you have to do now is just click in there Okay, and that should make the lettering go gold and just click again, click again with the paint bucket tool using the arrow that's on the corner of the tool and you'll be able to fill that in all gold or any color you want. Um, whatever color you picked in that uh, foreground little uh, color selector down kind of lower down in the tools here, uh, that color will be the one that gets paint bucketed in there. So that's how you can just change your letters uh, and control D when you're finished and you've got them in different colors. So uh, we then just save that colored heading we've made as vibe heading gold and saved it as a PSD file because now we can go back to our other project just by clicking on the tabs at the top of Photoshop, use our file place embedded, put it in there and resize it. And we've got our nice gold magazine cover. So now we just use file save as save the cover that we've got so far so we don't lose any work. All right. So that's kind of the background and the feature image and the heading on. Uh, and you might want to take a break because I've been going for 20 minutes. So you just take a break, come back in the timeline video. Uh, we've changed magazine title color was the last thing we did. So find out what the next thing is, which is making a gradient title. If you want to see how to do that and uh, come back to the video there. So take a break now if you want to or continue. Okay, welcome back. So you can also make gradient titles. So this works really well for a sports magazine uh, if you're doing that, where you fade between the team colors. So if you've got a team like Australia that's green and gold, you could have the thing start off gold or yellow and then fade into green or the other way around. So you're making a gradient rainbow uh, type thing. So what you do is uh, get back on the gradient tool, have all those letters selected, and you can set up the gradient by clicking on this big icon here. 
And then down here, you can double click on these and pick different colors. So we've kind of got uh, yellow going into kind of pink into purple is what the rainbow pattern we've chosen for ours. And then what you do is you just uh, push down your mouse and you drag across with that gradient tool across those letters that you've selected. And you'll see that they go now yellow fading into pink, fading into purple. So we've got a gradient type magazine, control D to finish and you can save that um, heading as your magazine heading and try that one out. Now that's kind of getting into bright colors and we're trying to do a minimalist magazine here. Uh, so we're not going to go with that, but that is something you could do if you want to and it's appropriate for your magazine. Now if you want to outline images and letters uh, like we saw on that promotional poster for the band right back at the start of the video, you can add stroke outlining to letters. So hold down shift and use your magic wand to get them all selected and then Right down the bottom of the layers uh, panel, there's a thing called FX and you just click the arrow on FX for effects and you want to get the stroke effect is the one you want. Now here there'll be settings. You can see we've got stroke effect uh, ticked. We've just chosen, chosen a red color to do the outline in. Very small, you only need about five pixels uh, to do the outline. Uh, and the position we used was inside and normal and just opacity 100%, so it's not see-through at all, it's full strength. Click your OK, and then you'll have the red outline, okay? Uh, so now we're ready to add headlines and text captions. So we didn't go for the red outline, we're just keeping ours plain, but you can outline text if you want to, and later on we're gonna outline this, some of this text we put on the cover uh, to make it more clear. Especially if you're putting like white writing onto a light colored, um, picture of a beach or something like that. If you just add a little bit of stroke around the letters, I usually use um, dark gray or black stroke. Well, then you can see the white letters even though it might be on a light colored background. All right, so a lot of the text is split across two lines. Now, when you split across two lines, most people are used, re used to pressing the enter button to get to a new line, but to make it not um, sort of make big gaps, you, you hold down the shift key and then you press enter, it's called shift and enter. Now see how we've done new sounds and then we press shift and enter and typed from Europe on this PowerPoint. Uh, we're just showing you here that if you press the enter key, it'll leave a one line gap in between. So shift and enter by holding down the shift and pressing enter when you get to the end of a line, the new line starts without this big gap. And we're gonna be doing that here. See where it's got West Coast rave times. We're gonna type West Coast, then we do shift enter, then we type rave times, all right? So that's the sort of um, double line writing we're gonna be doing on the magazine. Now, there's a few good standard fonts we found uh, which work best for magazine writing. Impact is a great one. We've used Impact a lot on this. Uh, Franklin Gothic Heavy uh, in uppercase or lowercase is another good one. Uh, it's bold there. Myriad Pro is a good one. And if you want skinny writing like this bit here that says for each other, that's in Sego UI, okay? So they're kind of the four uh, which we found were good to use. And before we start making any text, we need to do the view tab and rulers. Uh, so you can get some guides out, uh, which are grid lines that we use for lining up the edges of our text. So if you go view and then tick rulers, uh, and also make sure underneath there that snap uh, is not ticked. So you don't want snapping ticked, you just want rulers, not the snapping, okay? So make sure that's exactly like this where it's not ticked. Uh, and then you push down your mouse where this ruler is and hold down the mouse button and you drag out a ruler line here and then you go again and you drag out a ruler line over here. Right at the very edges of your magazine, might be a bit hard to see, we're just using it, leaving a tiny little space there and a tiny little space there to push the letters up again. So they're not right on the edge of the magazine, but all of the things will line up with each other. Uh, now, what did we just miss there? Uh, and yeah, if you wanna get rid of uh, these guides at any time, later on when you're finished, uh, remember, or if you put them in the wrong place, just do view up the top and go to clear guides, all right, if you need to clear them off. So if you mess that up and there's guides lines everywhere and it's a mess, just go view and clear guides and then try again dragging, pushing down on the ruler and dragging them out. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do is we're selecting impact. Uh, we're gonna use size 36, we've picked a a sort of a color here to use. 
And we're going to also go for left justified if it's on the left side of the magazine, right justified if it's going to be something over the right hand side of the cover. All right, so we're using those as well. Now we need to hurry this up a bit. Um, so all you got to do is click on your cover and start typing. Use shift and enter to go to a new line. Now Photoshop, as soon as you start typing, you might first put in all this lorem ipsum stuff. You just got to backspace over that back to the start before you start typing your stuff. And press the top ESC key on your keyboard if it messes up and you want to exit the text typing, all right? And the text will be going on a new layer in Photoshop. So if it's all messed up, you can just um, click on that layer where the messed up text is, go down the bottom right hand corner and press that rubbish can symbol to delete it, the trash can to trash it. So what we've done here is we've typed new hits in and we're dragging the mouse back along the text to highlight it. And then you go window character. And this is where we do the settings to uh, make the numbers, to make the letters closer together, uh, to squash them all up and make it look better. All right. So uh, let's just have a look with that new hits. What we're going to do is we are using impact as our font. So you can choose the font here on this window character panel that pops up. Uh, the font size we're using is 36. We're not going to worry about metrics, but the height, we're making the letters a little bit taller. We're going for 110% uh, just to make them a little bit taller. Over here, we just want regular. Some fonts will have the option of bold and italic, but not all fonts will have those options. Some of them you can only have as regular. Now this one here, uh, this changes how close together the lines are when you've split across two lines. You can see our two lines here are very close together. And that's how you use this AA. It brings lines closer together. And VA is how far apart um, the letters are spread. So if you want to bring all your letters closer together, we use minus values. All right, so if we use minus five, that's just going to squash the letters up a bit closer to each other, which is more kind of poster magazine style. And this can make the letters wider if you want to make them wider, but we're just going to leave them at their normal size, 100%. And you can also... Uh, change the color here if you don't like that color so you can click on that and get the usual color pick a panel so these are the kind of things we set up on window character that turn plain sort of photoshop text like typing text for in a book or on a powerpoint turn it into special text which is going to look really magazine covery so when we do that to this we make the letters a bit taller they're squashed up a bit uh, the lines are close together and everything looks good all right, uh, then you click off the T tool and you get onto the move tool and you can move it. Now you can type your own uh, values into those boxes as well. So uh, over here, there wasn't an option for 46. Uh, so we put 46 in there, okay? Uh, so clicking on the color, you can pick your color. And if you got want that exact same color, remember you can use the numbers we've got and that gets all that set up and we're gonna move it. Uh, over against this line. Okay, so when you're on the move tool, you've gone off the text tool, using the move tool, and you're holding down your mouse, you're moving that. When it gets on the line, you'll see a pink line appear, and that's when you let go of the mouse, and you know it's lined up with that guideline, okay? So that's how we do that. And all we have to do is just add all these other text headlines the same sort of way and leave a space down here where we're going to put the barcode, but we've just written in all this writing here. And then we're going to uh, east and west text horizontally. Yeah, east versus west, we're going to type it in horizontally. This is how you make the writing go up and down the page instead of across. So just type it in with those settings. That's the first step. Then we go edit free transform and you can get near the edges of it and you should get this uh, icon for turning it around. And if you push down the mouse, you can uh, hold down the mouse and turn it until it's nearly as close as you can get to 90 degrees. All right, we didn't get it perfect, 89.7, but it's near enough. So we've now made it vertical. So you're just going to edit free transform, get near the edge uh, and a symbol will appear, push down your mouse, hold down your mouse and just keep turning it until it's up and down at 90 degrees. And then we've got that sitting in there uh, running up vertically instead. 
Now, if you've got trouble thinking of captions to put on your magazine, like West Coast Rave Times and all these things, um, just Google for magazine covers, like Vibe covers in our case, and see what sort of things they um, put on there. And that's all we did. We just got a bunch of things we'd already seen on um, Vibe magazines. Now, the fonts we've used are to get this one, we're using impact, uh, size 30, this spacing here is 28 point, minus five here to squash the letters a bit closer together, uh, make them a bit taller, 110%, and we've choose, chosen that color. For this one here, we're using Franklin Gothic Heavy. Remember we talked about Franklin Gothic he Heavy was a good uh, kind of font. So that's a kind of a white, very light white gray color. And they're the settings to use for that one. This one here, the new reel, that's also in Franklin Gothic and they're the settings to get that sort of thing. And finding time is an impact and for the font and they're the sizes we used for that. All right, so this is how we made all those different sort of writings which are on there. So you can use that to help you. Now this for each other, we wanted that skinny and thin, it's supposed to be saying finding time for each other. Uh, that's when you use Sego UI is the font there, which will make really skinny sort of text, uh, which can look good. Uh, this one here is impact and they're the settings for that. Uh, this one here is a pinky color, Franklin Gothic heavy. And this one here, the Jersey Girl Worldwide exclusive is in impact and they're the settings there when you do window character, all right? So this should help you to get um, the various styles of text, which are gonna look postery or magazine-y and work well on your cover. Uh, MC LeKendrick use those settings. How many of these have we got? This month use those settings. Uh, if you get the downloads, you can get these printed out instructions and get all of these. All right, so I think we've covered every single thing we've put on there. Now you can add rectangles behind text as well. So you can go view, uh, clear the guides to get rid of the guides. And if we get onto the rectangle tool, what we did was we just, um, made these rectangles here over the top of the text and then just move them in the layers so they'll be underneath or behind the text. So see the new reel here, uh, we've got a rectangle behind it so you can read it better. So we just drew the rectangle over the top and then in our layers, uh, we just push that rectangle down so it's underneath the new reel and you can see the writing on top. So yeah, that's another good way that they do on magazine covers often to make things stand out better. The other thing is adding the stroke around it. So this West Coast Rave Times, we've added a bit of stroke. It's very subtle there, but you can read it a lot better with this dark stroke around it. So we just found that lettering in the layers, right clicked on it and did stroke and just chose black and very small, just two pixels, all right? And that'll get that outline around there and make that readable. That's especially good for white writing on a bright background, adding a little bit of black um, stroke around it. Um, now we did stroke around other ones and you can adjust the opacity. When we did this east versus west, we used a lighter color, uh, like this vibe color, but we actually took down the opacity to take the intensity of color out so it didn't look exactly the same as that. So that's another little trick. New hits here, uh, had some opacity put in it as well. Down times in LA, that's how we did that. And get the vibe this month, we added an inner glow instead, which is another thing you can do. So we right clicked on that and chose inner glow and set up some inner glow and that made that kind of a little bit glowy and standing out better. So they're the sort of things you can do to finalize your text and make it look really good. Last thing is to just get a barcode from Google Images and save it. Um, file place embedded and put it in there. Now it's a little bit bright, too white. So we just actually went to image adjustments, brightness, contrast, and just uh, took the brightness down, okay? So it looks a bit gray like that and doesn't jump out at you from the cover. So that's our minimalist cover finished and that was all the steps for it. So let's show you a quick demonstration in Photoshop. Uh, of some of those things. Now take a break now if you want to, and then in the timeline index, you can come back and uh, catch up with the rest of the video. Okay, so here we are over in Photoshop. So the first thing we do is we go file new and we want a size here, remember, of 500 going across and 800 for the height. And this will give us good magazine proportionals. Um, Background color, we'll just leave that as black. Uh, 72 pixels per inch is fine, and we create it. Okay, and here we go. So we've got all of this created, 
and there's our magazine cover. Now what we're going to do is we're going onto the rectangle tool and we're going to choose a gradient fill. So we go to this one for gradient and what we need is we don't want white up that end. We want to double click on that and get black up that end and down this end is where we wanted that gray color we saw earlier. So we want kind of a bit of a gray color, maybe like, I don't know where it was, maybe it was there. All right, and we need a radial gradient. So sort we're after radial here in this drop down list. And then when we draw our rectangle, what we should see is a gray spotlight in it. Okay, and this happened last time. It just, Photoshop just decided to fill it with black instead. And when you do this fill and try to change to gradient, it won't let you. Okay, so this happened last time. So let's close off those properties. Let's go to that rectangle there and just delete it. Okay, and let's try again. So we're on the rectangle tool. Let's just go to this foreground one and set that black to start off with. Uh, and on the rectangle tool. So we go to fill and we go to gradient and we pick. Here we want a gray color. All right, we want a radial gradient. And I don't know why this isn't working because it always works except when you do the video. And now we've got a linear gradient, which is not what we wanted. We want to be able to change the shape into radial. And finally, we've got it, all right? So it should work straight away uh, on your computer. I don't know why it didn't work here, but that's basically our rectangle. Now it doesn't quite fit, so I'll have to go edit free transform and just stretch this side a bit. But that's the kind of thing we want, a bit of a spotlight in the background. All right, now we do file and we go place embedded. And we've already got a picture. Uh, where are we? Photoshop. And we're up to lesson six, the minimalist magazine color and L6 downloads. All right, so we've got this anime picture, but we already made the background clear. So let's just grab anime lady clear and place that on. And it's got her on the cover. So we need to make that a lot bigger. Okay, now we want to leave some room for the writing and stuff, but we'll just have that kind of like that and press enter. All right, so that's looking good. And she's kind of in this spotlight effect now, so that's all right. So let's start up Chrome because we need to get the Vibe magazine heading. All right, it's the next thing. All right, so we put in Vibe magazine logo and go to images and then this one here doesn't look bad, so we'll just get that. Now you need to start up your snipping tool. Dropbox is interrupting and asking me things. I don't know why. Uh, so there's our snipping tool and we go new because we want to do a new snip and we can snip around here and we go edit copy. All right, so that's copied it into memory. Now back in Photoshop, we'll just leave this one open. If we go file new, you can see it's got 565 by 198. It knows how big that snip is in memory, okay? So we just leave all those settings as they are after we do file new and we go create. And now we can just go edit up the top of Photoshop and edit paste. And we've pasted that in. Now the black background is still underneath here. If you look in the layers panel, now if you're not seeing that, go to window and make sure layers is ticked. All right, but that black background now, we can just unlock that. And while we're clicked on that background, just go delete. And yes, we wanna take that away. So now we've only got the background with the vibe on it. Now here, remember, you push down on this one and we're not using quick selection, we're using magic wand. So we're gonna go in there and couldn't use it because no layers are selected. All right, so we'll click on that layer in the layers panel so it's selected. Uh, then we can click on there, 
click on here. Now to get them both selected, you need to hold down the shift key. So hold down the shift key and keep your finger just pressing that shift key down. I'm still pressing it down until I've got all of them selected. Now we don't want to uh, go delete just yet or we delete our letters. So let's go control and Z to go backwards. We need to go select and inverse so that now we've got the opposite selected we've got the whole background selected and we press the delete key and we go control d and we've got our heading like that and we can save it now as a photoshop item and we can file place embedded but we want to change the color so remember back on the magic wand uh, hold down shift while you're doing this so you've got all of your letters and then Usually the gradient tool is here, but if you hold down on the gradient tool and go to the paint bucket tool, uh, we can pick our paint bucket color here. So remember, we were wanting uh, a sort of a color that's like a red, because she's kind of wearing this red colored dress. So maybe a color like that. And now on our paint bucket, we just get the arrow and click the arrow on each of these and they're going gray. Now, remember we said, okay, so image and then modes right up the top. We need to be in RGB color. All right. So now we'll get back on our paint bucket and hopefully that color will fill in. All right. So yeah, Photoshop being a nuisance, but remember it's just image mode and you've got to make sure you're on RGB color. All right, so we've paint bucketed them all in that color. So that's control D. Now let's do file save as, and we just save this on our computer somewhere. And let's just call this, uh, now it needs to be saved as a PSD folder. So we'll just call it vibe head PSD and save it. Now we can go back to our other project here and we can go file place embedded uh, find that one which we just saved. So many things here. Fibe. Fibe Gold. Fibe Head PSD. All right, and we can place that in. Now, obviously, it's way too big, so we can grab the sides of that and put that across the top. Where is our top? Yeah, let's sort of put it across there. All right, now if you want to uh, just color match it better, now that it's in there, you can just uh, shift and click the magic wand and we can go back to our color picker here and we can pick an actual color that's in her dress and then we can use our paint bucket and see the smart object must be rasterized. So Photoshop's decided to make it a smart object. So we have to go to its layer and we've got to right click on the layer and we've got to go rasterize layer. Okay, but it won't let us do it because we probably maybe we've got it selected. Uh, now that should not be a smart layer. Okay, we were clicked on for some reason. I don't know how you do it, but that was selected and it was on a different layer. But we're on that layer. We don't have to rasterize it. And we can go control D and we've got that heading. Let's just go to the move tool and move it down a bit. Uh, let's go to her and just move her down a bit. Alrighty, so that's that done. Uh, now we are ready to do some text headings. So we get on the text tool and you need to be on horizontal type. So make sure you hold it down and you're on horizontal type. And we've got our impact font there already. Okay, but these are in alphabetical order and you can scroll down, scroll down, sorry, and find somewhere way down here is impact. All right, we want regular. Now the size we're gonna use, I will try 24 point to start off with. Now the color we want, uh, let's click on that color and let's get uh, just a kind of a white color. All right, a gray white color. And now we can click in here and see how it's put in its lorem ipsum stuff. Well, we don't want that. So we can just backspace and go uh, this month and then shift, hold down the shift key and press enter. And we'll just say this month is anime. Okay, now 
while we're on the text tool, uh, we just have to push down our mouse and highlight all of that. Then you can go window and do this window character. All right. Now we want that bigger. So what we'll do is we'll change our font size here from 24. We'll make it 36, let's say, and then click off it. And now the letter size, we've made it taller. Let's just bring it back to 100%. So that's normal size. See, there was a bit of a delay with these effects taking change. Now, see here, it's 28 point on the AA property. Well, that's making it way too close together. If we're using 36 here, what we should use is something just a bit smaller there, I think is usually what you do. So we'll try 34 and press enter. That's not bad. What if we went to 35? That makes it further apart. Okay, maybe we'll try 30. Okay, that's too close together. I think I'm being really picky here. Uh, let's just go to, and it's being difficult, of course. Let's go to 32, and if that doesn't work, all right, so that's kind of fine and that's good. Now, if you want to make the letters wider, let's try that out. We'll go to 120%. See how the letters got fatter? All right, so if we click off it now onto the move tool, uh, we can put that there. So we can have this month is anime. Now remember we said how you can right click on the layer. So this is a text layer that's made. Remember, right click on that and go to uh, a you can go to blending options, but what's better is just have it highlighted and go down to the bottom here. See how it says FX right at the very bottom. Click on FX and we want to put a bit of stroke on that. And the color we're going to use is we can use our dipper and we'll kind of dip into a bit of a, and we'll try a pinkish color like that. And you can see this already uh, outlining it just with one pixel. Now you don't need to make these big, like three pixels you can see is way too big. <coughs> and two pixels is probably too big as well. So just one pixel actually is all we need. Now you can change the transparency as well. Uh, we'll just put it up all the way. And we could change the color. Maybe it would be better if we dipped into that color. But no, I don't think so, actually. So I'll have something like that. Now it's very subtle, but you can see that reads a lot better and stands out a lot better now. All right, so we've got that. This month is anime. Um, and look, you just keep adding text, all right? So let's uh, see this character. If you want to close that off, you just use these double arrows just here and we'll close that off. So we'll get on our text tool and we'll pick another color. Uh, let's pick this red color and then let's go a bit less intense. And here we're going to use for our font, what were some of the other fonts we could use? Franklin Gothic Heavy. So let's go in for a bit of the Franklin Gothic Heavy. Size 36 regular here. We wanted that color. So we can dip in there. Now it had our other one highlighted still. So we need to go control Z because it's changed that one. Uh, we need to be on the text tool and we need to click in there and then it's put its lorem itsum. So let's get rid of that and have new, then shift enter and new hits. New hits, um, let's put USA in there or something like that. Okay, so we'll color that in and we'll do our window character to do these other settings. Now we don't like that color, so let's just uh, take the dipper and dip into there. Uh, so that's kind of all right. Maybe we'll go a little bit uh, keeping in the same color family, but we'll kind of go a little bit darker. New hits USA. Uh, all right, now what else do we need to do with that? Uh, we've got minus five on here. We've got 36 and 32. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, we could go bigger on this. Let's go up to 40 and see what happens. So you just click off it and 
it should kick in the effect uh, when we click in another box. It, now it's gone a different color, which kind of makes things a bit different, but uh, New Hits USA, uh, in terms of spreading out the letters, let's just put that back to zero and see what happens there. The letters should spread out a bit more, he says. Uh, but yeah, look, that's not bad. So let's just click off this onto the move tool and that's not bad, all right? Now, remember we talked about guides. So you go view and we go rulers. So we can see our rulers. Remember, make sure snaps not ticked, but you want rulers ticked. And see how it's put these rulers at the top and bottom. Now you push down your mouse on this ruler and we can drag out a guide and see we're up against that one now. We let go of the mouse just now. So we wanna move this other one over so it lines up with that one, all right? So you just push down and hold your mouse and move it and see how the line's gone a kind of a pink color? That means it's lining up with the other one, all right? And we can leave that there. All right, now one more thing we'll just show you uh, before we wrap this bit up is remember you could go onto the rectangle tool and we want just solid fill this time, not gradient. Uh, now, how do we get back to a solid fill? No fill. If we click on one of these, so let's get a kind of a background rectangle that's that color. All right, so just click on this and it'll get out of gradient and so ready to go. So what we do is we just draw a rectangle over New Hits USA like that and that's all fine. Now see how that rectangle's above where the text is in the layers over here? We just need to push down and hold this New Hits USA and move it up so it's on top of the rectangle, okay? And then you've got your rectangle there. Now, and go window properties, that would help a lot better. Ah, here we go, and it's that color. All right, so let's go for a white sort of color. Yeah, that might be better like that. Uh, so you can just use these arrows to and the X to close that uh, to get rid of it and then just build it up so it's a finished cover and just find a barcode, save it and do file place in bed and put the barcode in the corner. All right, so that's the idea of making the magazine cover. It's all about making the text and using window character. So let's go back to the presentation and finish off. Okay, so uh, other applications. These skills you've learned uh, are great for making promotional posters which people can use on social media. So when we do music photos for bands, for example, we can also make a promotional poster for them. So here, this person's just been cut out and put on top of a shot that was taken outside, blended into a shot over here with a lot of fuzz around the edge of it uh, taken inside and then see this writing here notice that it's all got stroke around it okay so we've put the stroke around that writing and that all looks really good uh, here's another one here uh, that picture was actually taken in my house just against a green screen uh, that particular one and then put in there uh, again using the stroke around there adds so much and makes things so much more easier to read when you do that all right and so on and so on and this one is uh, very very fancy the way that's been done but you can get these fonts off to font and do all these things and yeah if you can add a bit of value as well as taking photos and getting great music photos for people if you can also do promotional work for them um, that'll get you uh, more money and more work as well okay so that's the end of it for this lesson so thanks for watching give this video a big thumbs up like and subscribe subscribe to our channel make sure you hit that subscribe button so you uh, see when the next videos come up and we'll see you in the next lesson